Apologies, Honorable Dagmo. I've I've just muted all of the mics. Maybe just an update. Um, it is 10:31. If I can just record who is in the meeting based on the membership as ATC. We have Honorable Heron that's in the meeting from the Good Party, a member as per the ATC. Honorable Dagmo is in the meeting, one of the members from the ANC. Um, as per the ATC, Honorable Danville Smith, one of the alternates for the African National Congress um, and a member. Um, Honorable Derek America, one of the members for the Democratic Alliance. Uh, Honorable Ferland Christians, who is also a member of the committee from the ACDP. Honorable Gillian Bosman, a, uh, from the Democratic Alliance, also a member of the committee. Honorable Bartman, Democratic Alliance, a uh, uh, member of the committee. I'm going to skip the administrative staff. Honorable Khail Khalid Said, um, ANC, member of the committee. Honorable um, Ray Wenger, Democratic Alliance, member of the committee. Honorable Peter Mare, um, Freedom Front Plus, member of the committee. Honorable Regan um, Allen, uh, Democratic Alliance, member of the committee. Um, Honorable Ricardo McKenzie, um, Democratic Alliance and member of the committee. Honorable uh, Wendy Philander. Um, Democratic Alliance and member of the committee. Um, the other members are not yet uh, part of the the committee, uh, part of the meeting, but I see all of the parties as per the ATC. Um, the parties being the Democratic Alliance, the African National Congress, the Economic Freedom Fighters, who is not yet present in the meeting, and then the smaller parties, the Good Party, the ACDP, the FF Plus um, are all part of the meeting. So we're basically just waiting for the party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, to join us um, in this meeting. Um, the the members from from the other parties who are present, uh, the procedural staff and our IT is just trying to contact the other members of your party who is not yet present in the meeting, so that we have a full um, a full list of members. As, as part of the meeting. Is that in order with everyone or, or do we desire to continue with the meeting seeing that we already do have a majority of members present? Honorable Dagmo, we can't hear you. You're going to have to unmute your mic. Um, good morning. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. I would propose that we proceed with the meeting. Okay. Any of the representatives, the members from the other parties, do we have support that we proceed? Uh, Freedom Front Plus support. Uh, uh, opposition. Okay. Any of the other parties? Honorable Aaron? Yes, we need to proceed. It's 10.35 and we have a quorum. Okay. Um, the I think yeah the the Democratic Alliance any of the representatives there can we continue? Yeah, sure we can continue. Okay, um, thank you. Yes, honourable honourable um, Philander. No, that wasn't me, secretary. It it was oh. uh, me, uh, Mireille Wenger. Just a yes, note that uh, honourable Mitchell sent a note to say that uh, he's having trouble connecting. If he could perhaps be assisted, please. Okay, okay. Um, we, uh, Honourable Wenger, we, we do have a quorum. The IT, uh, the procedural staff will engage the IT colleagues just to ensure that Honourable Mitchell is assisted. But can we continue with the meeting? We can continue. Thank you, thank um, you. Yes, um, ma'am? Could, could we perhaps do the roll call again? It was a little bit... Uh, no, no, I'm going to we're going in and off. The roll call again, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, honorable members and staff. Maybe just before we continue, um, we had also received a request from um, the Parliamentary Monitoring Group, PMG, um, to also be an observer to this meeting. If we look at the participants, we will see that they are also, they've all joined, also joined the meeting as the guest. 
So I thought I'll maybe just communicate that to all of the members present also. The meeting, this first meeting of the ad hoc committee, um, COVID-19, um, is also being recorded by our IT staff. And, and will then, as per normal, the recordings of all of the committee meetings will then be made available to the committee staff um, in terms of those recordings. Um, this is the first meeting, like I said, of the ad hoc committee. The ad hoc committee uh, was determined by the speaker in terms of Rule 119.1b, and that was communicate the determination and the establishment of the committee was then um, uh, published in the ATC. Um, the most recent ATC where the membership has been updated is ATC 23 of 2020, dated Thursday, the 16th of April, 2020. Okay. The agenda for the, for the ad hoc committee, this first meeting was then also circulated by uh, Ms. Zaida Adams, the procedural officer responsible for this committee. If we can just start with the, with the roll call. In terms of the ATC, um, after, I'm just going to read the ATC, after consulting all seven political parties represented in the Western Cape Provincial Parliament and all input considered, it has been resolved that the committee shall consist of 15 one five members as follows. The Democratic Alliance has eight members and the membership is the Honourables R. Allen, Honourable D. America, Honourable D. Bartman, Honourable G. Bosman, Honourable D. Mitchell, Honourable W. Philander, Honourable A. Van Avestaisen, Honourable M. Wenger. The alternates for the Democratic Alliance is Honourable L. Bota, Honourable R. McKenzie, Honourable L. Maseko. The African National Congress has three members, and the members are Honourable C. Dagmo, Honourable P. Lecker, Honourable R. Winfogel. The alternates for the African National Congress is Honourable N. Nkondlu, Honourable M. Saeed, and Honourable D. Smith. For the Economic Freedom Fighters, there is one member for the Economic Freedom Fighters, and the member is Honourable M. Kejo. Um, other smaller parties, smaller opposition parties, three members jointly, and the members are Honourable B. Heron from the Good Party, Honourable F. Christians from the African Christian Democratic Party, Honourable P. Mare from the Freedom Front Plus, and the Al Jama um, political party elected not to participate. Furthermore, the ATC reflects that the ad hoc committee shall have all the general powers conferred upon the committees in accordance with the standing rules, Rule 91, as well as any other power where applicable conferred upon committees generally in accordance with the standing rule, Rules 77 to 95. The committee shall meet by way of electronic means until such time as the spread of the virus has been adequately contained so as to render in-person meetings safe. The committee is instructed to report regularly on its findings. Honourable members and support staff, that is what the ATC had reflected in terms of the establishment of the committee. Okay, if we do a roll call quickly, in terms of the members present in this specific meeting. Okay. Um, we would have Honourable Heron from the Good Party, Honourable Dagmo from the ANC, Honourable Danville Smith, that is an alternate from the ANC, Honourable Dalen Mitchell from the DA, Honourable Derek America from the DA, Honourable Ferlin Christians from the ACDP, Honourable Gillian Bosman from the DA, Honourable a. van der Westeisen from the DA, Honourable D. Bartman from the DA, Honourable Khalid Said from the ANC, Honourable Melikaya Kejo from the EFF, Honourable Marie Wenger from the DA, Honourable Naomi Nkondlo from the ANC, Honourable Peter Mare from the Freedom Front Plus, Honourable Regan Allen from the DA, Honourable Ricardo Mackenzie 
from the DA. Um, those are the members present. Okay, um, members, can we agree that this committee has curated and the business of the committee can continue? Are there any other members present that I have not noted? Secretary? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Philander. Member Philander. Okay, Member Philander. Member Philander. Okay. Member Philander, I'm just checking on the on the participants where I can find. Okay, there we go. Okay, I needed to add two more. It is indeed so, Member Philander. Member Philander is also present in the meeting. Can we agree? Thank you, Member Philander. Can we agree that the meeting is correcting and we can continue? Yes. Agreed? Yes. Agreed. Okay, so agreed. Maybe just in terms of the engagement in this meeting, my role and only role is in terms of Rule 85 um, of the Standing Rules. It's on page 41. It says, the heading is first meeting. The first meeting of a committee, if not convened in some other manner, must be convened by the secretary within five working days after the names of the members appointed to serve on the committee were published in the ATC. So this convening of this meeting on Friday, the 17th of April in the year 2020, is, into, is to give effect to that meeting, where I will be officiating the election of a chairperson of this committee. Once the chairperson has been elected, I, as the secretary, will then hand over the meeting to the chairperson, who would then continue with the business of this meeting going forward. I am requesting that we agree that if a member um, needs to be heard by the chairperson, or in this case by the secretary, that the member um, unmutes his or her mic, identifies himself or herself, um, the secretary, I am Honorable X from this party, and then I will then give that member an opportunity to, to, to state or to make a point, and then the committee will then engage. If we agree on that matter, I'll then go straight over into calling for nominations for the chairperson of this committee. Can we agree, members? Um, Speaker, uh, Secretary, um, could yes, I just, um, before, just before nominations, if I could just um, make a contribution? Yes, sir. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think that um, the, the, the issue of the ad hoc committee as a, uh, a committee to play oversight to play an oversight role um, um, for me indicates that w one of the the informing principles in regard to um, how we constitute the committee and the chairperson um, is one of those informing principles is obviously the issue of oversight the the issue of impartiality and accountability and given that in essence we would be having oversight over the provincial um, MECs and the provincial government, and we have uh, a precedent in regard to the um, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts and Finance, and we think that it's very important that a member of the um, opposition, one of the um, opposition parties, um, is the chairperson. So I would like to test that view um, with with the members and um, uh, and make an, ar an argument that the chairperson that we elect should come from. Uh, one of the opposition parties, not necessarily the official opposition, uh, but but one of the uh, opposition parties. So I would like us to discuss that uh, principle. Thank you, Honourable Dagmar. And Honourable Dagmar, as I had previously stated, my role is to preside as the secretary is in terms of the rules to preside over the election of a chairperson. The election process by its nature would result in nominations being made by members who are present and who are members of this committee. There would then be a process if there's more than one nomination that the, the members um, of this committee then uh, through a voting process would then determine who would be the chairperson of, of this committee. Um, what you are asking for is for a deliberation on, on who should be nominated and how the election process then unfolds. 
I, I don't think that is within my ambit for that discussion to be to be facilitated by me as the secretary, given I have a clear role in terms of what my role is for the first meeting of a committee. Um, thank you very much, Secretary. Um, I do see it as part of the role. It's correct. You you are mandated by the rules to oversee the election of a chair. Um, now, the proposal I'm making relates directly to that, is just to test amongst the members a proposal that the chair should come from an opposition party. Because if we all agree, um, then that would, simp that would facilitate the process of nomination. So I don't think it's overstepping your role. I think we're simply asking you, as the chair of the meeting at this point in time, to facilitate a brief discussion um, and test the views of the parties on that. I think that will then um, clarify the, the process of nomination. So I do not see it as overstepping your mark. I think it's part of the process of resolving on the chair of this committee. So I'm, what I'm requesting to you as the secretary who's chairing the meeting now is to allow an opportunity for members to express themselves on that matter. Okay, Honourable Honourable Dagmore, your your input is noted. Maybe just I saw Honourable Heron. Um, did you request to be heard, Honourable Wenger? Yes. I note. I think I just saw Honourable Heron first. Yeah, thank you, Secretary. I um I think that um the proposal being made by Honourable Dagmore is something that we should consider, and I think we need to ask the DA, who obviously have the majority members on this committee, to consider um, supporting this proposal. Um, I think it's important that the, um, the oversight over um, the, the functioning of the executive, particularly with this crisis, um, has, the, um, has the appearance and the functioning of impartiality. So I would support um, Honourable Dagmore's proposal and ask the DA to consider it. Thank you, Honourable Aaron. Honourable Wenger? Thank you, Mr Secretary. I would propose that um, parties have the opportunity to nominate a chairperson from amongst its members as per the rules. Thank you. So you can thank you if you can just hold, please, Honourable Dunbar. Thank you, Honourable Wenger. I, I thought I heard a, another voice of a member. Member, can you just identify yourself? Member if Christians. Honourable member Christians. Thank you, Member, member Christians. Christians. Thank you, Member Christian. Uh, thank you, thank you, Secretary, and thank you for the input. Um, uh, I, w I want to agree with um, that the opposition parties do take the chairpersonship of uh, this committee. Uh, it's going to be useless and senseless to go into a vote because we know the DA's got the majority number. But if we are all clear that we want this pandemic that we are facing to have proper oversight, I think uh, it would be very, uh, it would be gracious from the DA uh, to allow our opposition party to chair the meeting in order to have full transparency. And uh, I mean, uh, we have worked together as uh, committees and we work as one. We don't work as uh, political parties, but we work uh, to a committee. So we're there to support one another. But it will be a great thing if uh, the if people will see that this is a committee chaired by opposition because we are serious to see that uh, oversight is done uh, uh, properly over the executive and the provincial government. So I also support that um, if, if, if the DA do not want to do that, we can go into nominations. Um, but I mean, uh, the DA with the chief were being present here, uh, really need to consider that, you know, it will give a lot of credibility to this committee if we have our position uh, uh, member chairing this committee. Thank you, Chicken Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Christians. Maybe just two members before Honourable Dagbo concludes on, on this Secretary, matter. We have... Uh, okay. On, Honourable Mare, if, if you can just hold quickly, I just need to clarify what is the current positions. Currently, we have two proposals. A proposal from the ANC that there be a discussion on the chairpersonship of this committee. Then we have a proposal from the DA through Honourable Wenger that we continue with the nomination process. Um, there are two other parties who have supported, but I think because we have at least one party who does not support um, the, the proposal by Honourable Dagmo 
from the ANC. We are, have to, we are going to have to decide on a way forward. It is not unanimous from the current positions that the proposal from the ANC is supported. Honorable Mare. Yes, Mr. Chair, Secretary, thank you so much. I do believe that this is the time for bipartisan or tripartisanship in politics. This is not a time to show muscle because you're a majority party. There are huge problems here, and thus far the DA has unilaterally managed the system. They've created the system, and how are we going to tackle this COVID-19? They've executed it, and the opposition parties had no or very little say in it. And now that we're putting them under the microscope, I think they must allow us to have the chairmanship as opposition parties. You cannot be the judge in your own trial. Uh, I think that this is time for the DA to relent and to agree to the proposal by the leader of the opposition. I support the leader of the opposition's proposal. Thank you, okay. Honourable. Thank you, Honourable Marie. Uh, I think it's Honourable America. That's correct. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, um, I, I hear what the uh, members of the opposition is saying. Um, one should consider that this committee is much larger than the usual um, ad hoc committee that's been created for any particular purpose. And I think that what we need to do is that we, I mean, it is presumptuous of the members of the opposition to um, assume that maybe the chair is going, the DA chair is going to be biased or not impartial. Um, and I think that for you to entertain this debate, <laughs> it is also not with the amber to do so. Um, but I understand the sensitivity of the matter and the awkward position that they've placed in. So my suggestion would be that we should just, if they have a preferred chairperson, they should nominate that chairperson and then we decide um, by democratic means as to who the chairperson of this uh, adult committee should be. Therefore, I would propose, Chair, um, so Mr. Secretary, that we should proceed and because we're wasting unnecessary time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Honourable America. In, in, in putting the two positions on the table earlier, before Honourable Mare had, had made his input, from the further discussions, those positions remain unchanged. The request from Honourable Dagmore was that the committee engages on the chairpersonship. Um, as, as, as the person presiding over, over this part of the meeting, um, I, I can see no reason why we cannot continue with the nominations, given that each party has an opportunity to nominate a member that they think would be, would be in a position to chair this meeting. Honourable members, I will then now further continue with calling for nominations for chairpersonship of this meeting and of this ad hoc committee to deal with COVID-19. I'd like to make a nomination. Okay, Honourable Dagmore for the first nomination. Yes, Honourable Dagmore. I would like to nominate Honourable Brett Heron to chair this committee. Okay. Thank you, Honourable Members. Honourable Dagmore from the ANC nominates Honourable Brett Heron from the Good Party to chair the committee. Are there any further nominations? Yes. Honourable Wenger. Hello. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Hello. Yeah, members, members, if I can just ask again, when you do unmute your mic, the first words uh, that I'm asking that comes would be, um, I, um, this is Honourable X, so that I can recognise the Honourable Member, please. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. This is um, Honourable Mitchell. Good morning, Honourable Mitchell. You are recognised. Um, thank you, Secretary. I would like to nominate um, Honourable um, Wenger to chair the committee. Okay. Honourable Dalen Mitchell from the Democratic Alliance nominates Honourable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance to chair the meeting. Are there any further nominations? Check. 
Secretary? Honorable Philander? Um, at this point, um, Wendy Philander from the Democratic Alliance, I wish to second the nomination made by Honorable uh, Dalen Mitchell. Okay. Thank you, Honorable, Honorable Philander. Are there any further nominations for Chairperson of the Ad Hoc Committee COVID-19? Mr. We, Speaker, Peter Murray, Freedom Front. Uh, Honorable Murray. I second the proposal for Mr. Brett Egan as Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Murray. Uh, um, Honorable Murray from the Freedom Front Plus seconds the proposal by Honorable C. Dagmo from the ANC for Honorable Brett Heron from the Good Party to be the chairperson. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? No, Secretary. Okay. Thank you very much. It has then been resolved that we have two nominations for the position of chairperson of the Western Cape Provincial Parliament Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19. We have the nomination of Honorable Murray Wenger from the Democratic Alliance. We have the nomination of Honorable Brett Heron from the Good Party. I'm going to start with the Honorable, the nomination of Honorable Heron. We are going to elect and we are going to vote. I am going to ask, okay, we first just going to be clear on what is the process. I am going to call the nominee, the name of the nominee, each of the parties. I'm going to call out the parties will then have an opportunity, their members present, then to indicate whether they support the nomination and vote for that specific candidate, okay? Because we have um, alternates also present in the meeting, okay? I have the ATC here in front of me. When a member of a political party does indicate I am Honorable X, okay? If you are an alternate, you are going to have to clarify um, which member of your party who is not present here you are standing in for, okay? The, the, the procedural officers will tally up the votes. The maximum number of votes after the elections must be 15. It cannot be more than 15 because then somebody has voted that should not have voted. Okay, are we all clear on that, parties? Um. Okay, we are the nomination of Honorable Brett Heron for, from the good party. I'm um, going to start. Uh, secretary? Yes. Um, thank, thank you. Um, I, would just request, I would just request an opportunity to motivate um, my nomination and also provide an opportunity to the seconder um, of, of the nomination that's been made. And I'm sure, you know, the, the, those that have nominated Honorable Wenger could do the same. Could, could we just have a, a short opportunity to make the motivation? Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Wenger? Honorable Secretary? Honorable Wenger was first and then Honorable Mitchell. Sorry, please proceed, Honorable Mitchell. Thank you, Honorable Secretary. Honorable Secretary, the voting process has started. You've called for nominations. Yeah. Uh, we are in the voting process now. On a point of order, I don't think any debate can further be allowed. Can we please continue to the voting process? It's not a Honorable Dugmore, it's not a debate. It's a motivation. It's the same principle. Okay, Honourable Honourable Dagmore, you have requested an opportunity to motivate. There is um, a a different view in terms of the motivation. The nominations have been made for the two honourable members. I would suggest that we continue with the voting process um, and not motivate the nomination as have been made by the, nom the person who had nominated and then by, second by the seconder. Okay, can Agreed. we continue? Uh, thank Agreed. you, Secretary. Thank you very much. Could, sorry, Secretary. 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 Sorry, okay. Secretary. Um, could I please put, I would like my proposal, if there's a seconder for it, um, to be put to the vote, please. Okay. Honorable Dagmo, what you are asking for is if there's any other member present who supports your suggestion 
um, for a motivation, whether the such member then indicates as such, and whether the meeting then votes on that proposal. That is what you are asking for. Honourable Dagmore, that's correct, Secretary. Okay. Honourable Wenger, point of order. Honourable Wenger. Uh, on a point of order, Mr. Secretary, um, what the Honourable Member is requesting is not uh, procedural according to the standing rules, um, and I'd like to request um, advice on whether that is procedural. No other standing committee has ever um, had to motivate its nominations for chairpersons, um, and um, we would really like the meeting to uh, proceed so that we can get uh, to the work of the committee, please. Freedom Marais, Freedom Front. Thank you. Honourable Marais. I just want to bring it to the, attention, to the attention of the committee that <coughs> Honourable Wenger changed the rules of the Rules Committee whenever it suits her. She's done so on several occasions. And it's very Wenger, strange. Point of order. 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 On a point of order, Secretary, we are now going to... On Your point of order in the House is not applicable. Honorable Murray, Honorable Murray, Honorable Murray, I'm asking that we please stick, all Honorable Members, that we stick to the business of this committee in terms of this phase. This phase is meant to, to facilitate the election of the chairperson of this committee. Um, until the chairperson is elected, the business of the committee cannot continue. I'm asking that as honourable members that we please facilitate the speedy resolution of the election of the chairperson. Honourable Dagmo had made a specific proposal. I, I had not uh, recorded or heard any support for that proposal. There has been a suggestion by Honourable yeah. Mitchell. Member Fallen Christians, Secretary, Member Fallen Christians. Christians. Member Christians, if you would just allow me to please continue, just to complete okay. this. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the business of the committee is something that needs to continue after the election of the chairperson. Okay, I am therefore asking that we work together to speedily resolve the election of the chairperson. Okay, the, uh, the honorable member from the Democratic Alliance had indicated that um, there has not been a discussion or a motivation at any of the nominations for chairpersons of these committees. I'm then asking that we continue. Honorable Chair, Honorable Christians, I'm asking that if it is possible that you be the last person to add any input regarding this matter. Honorable Christians? Uh, Chairperson, I don't think it's wrong if we just listen to what the Honorable Doug was saying, because we, we, we need to realize that they, they, we we are going to work together as a committee. So you know uh, when you uh, when you hear what come uh, when the members uh, hear what uh, Honorable Dagmar is saying, we must start to think uh, not to uh, push a certain agenda. We want to work as a committee together. The DA's got the numbers. If they made up the mind that they're going to vote for Honorable Winger, that's fine. But I think we must just be tolerant and just. Uh, let this committee start from a good level so that we can just hear what the member is saying. Afterwards, we can take a vote. We don't have to motivate further, but just hear, because already now the DA is pushing the agenda by not allowing people to say, I mean, what is the purpose of this committee? This committee wants to do its work, but let's start off right and let's just give Honorable Dagmar opportunity to voice, um, uh, give his motivation, and then we can vote. If nobody wants to motivate further, let's then vote because the DA has got the numbers. But I think we just need to indulge one another, be tolerant, and just work from a from a basis that we do uh, give everybody opportunity, even if they just want to say something. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Honourable Christians. Hon Honourable Members, if you would allow me to, to proceed as follows. I have been advised that as the Secretary convening this first meeting of the ad hoc committee for the election of the chairperson of the ad hoc committee, that I quite simply do not have the authority to allow any de further debates or any motivation for the nominated chairpersons of um, this committee. I therefore ask that we continue with the voting. Again, I put the name of Honorable Heron as the nominated 
uh, a nominated chairperson for this committee before the committee. I will call out the parties, the members of those parties will have to identify themselves and then indicate um, when they support the nomination of Honorable Heron. I hereby continue. Honorable Heron's nomination, the Democratic Alliance, is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Heron as chairperson? No. No. Okay, I move on to the next party, the African National Congress. Is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Heron as chairperson of this ad hoc committee? Um, Secretary, thank you. As the person who nominated uh, Brett Heron um, and understanding his experience and his ability to hold oversight, I would like to vote for um, Honorable Heron because I believe that he would also present um, a credible uh, chair um, that would um, add credibility to the entire process of the ad hoc committee. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dagmore. Votes for Honorable Heron. Are there any other members of the African National Congress that vote for the nomination of Honorable Heron? Are there any other members of the African National Congress? Honorable Secretary, Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith. Yes, yes Honorable Smith. I stand in for Honorable Wintvogel and I yes, sir. also support the nomination of Honorable Heron. Thank you, Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith also votes for the nomination of Honorable Heron. Are there any other members of the African Chair. National Congress? Chair, I'm also nominating. I mean, I'm also voting. Okay, Honourable Honourable Said, you are an additional member. Who are you standing in for, sir? I am standing in for the Honourable Chief Whip, Honourable Lekker. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm also voting for the Honourable Heron. Okay, thank you, thank you, Honourable Said. Honourable Said from the African National Congress also votes in support of the nomination of Honourable Heron. I move on to the next party. The Economic Freedom Fighters. <coughs> Is there any, any support for the nomination of Honorable Heron? The Economic Freedom Fighters. Okay, we move on to the next party, which would be the Good Party, Honorable. Is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Heron from the Good Party? Yes. Okay. Honorable Heron, was that you who said yes, sir? Heron, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Heron. Is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Heron from the Af African Christian Democratic Party? Member Fallen Christians, yes. Thank you, Member Christians. Member Christians from the ACDP also supports the nomination of Honorable Heron as chairperson. Is there any support? We move on to the next party. Um, from the Freedom Front Plus for the nomination of Honorable Heron as chairperson of this committee? Yes, I shall support. Is this Honorable Marais? That Honorable Marais, sir, PJ. Thank you, Honorable Marais, PJ. Honorable Marais, PJ from the FF Plus supports the nomination of Honorable Heron as chairperson of this committee. Just to see clarity, have I missed any other party who has not yet been given an opportunity? Okay. If not, we then move on to the next nomination. The next nomination was for Honorable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance as chairperson of this ad hoc committee. Again, I'm going to name all of the parties and if there is support, the members have to identify themselves and indicate their support. I start with the Democratic Alliance. Are there any members from the Democratic Alliance who supports the nomination of Honorable M. Wenger as chairperson of this committee? Yes. Secretary, yes. As the person that nominated it at Honorable Wenger, I, I, I vote and support. Okay, Honorable Dalen Mitchell from the Democratic Alliance votes in support of Honorable Wenger as the chairperson of this committee. Are there any other members? Can we do it one for one, please? Deirdre Bartman. Deirdre Bartman, you are recognized, Honorable. 
Secretary Deirdre Barton from the Democratic Alliance, I vote for Honorable Murray Winger from the Democratic Alliance for Chairperson of this committee. Okay, thank you very much. Honorable Deirdre Bartman votes in support of Honorable Wenger as chairperson of this committee. Thank you, Honorable Derek Bartman. America. Derek America. Honorable America. Honorable America. Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, I support um, the nomination of Honorable Wenger as chairperson of the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable America. Honorable D. America votes in support of the chairpersonship of Honorable Wenger of this committee. Any other members of the Democratic Alliance? Honorable Van Westhuizen. I support the nomination of uh, Honorable Wenger. Thank you, Honorable Van Westhuizen. To confirm, Honorable A. Van Westhuizen votes in support of the nomination of Honorable M. Wenger as chairperson of this committee. Any other um, members of the Democratic Alliance? Gillian Mr. Secretary. Honorable Bosman, you are recognized. Um, I vote for Honorable Winger as chairperson of the committee. Thank you, Honorable Bosman. Honorable Bosman from the Democratic Alliance votes in support of the nomination of Honorable M. Winger as chairperson of this committee. Any other members from the Democratic Alliance? Regan Allen. Honorable Allen, you are recognized. I am in support of Murray Winger's um, nomination for chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Allen. To confirm, Honorable R. Allen from the Democratic Alliance votes in support of the nomination of Honorable M. Wenger of the Democratic Alliance as chairperson of this ad hoc committee. Any other no support? Any other votes from the Democratic Alliance? Wenger? Yes, Honorable Wenger. Um, uh, I also support uh, the nomination um, of myself for chair. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Wenger. Just to confirm, Honorable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance votes in support of the nomination of Honorable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance as chairperson of this ad hoc committee. Are there any other members from the Democratic Alliance who wish to express their vote for Honorable um, M. Wenger as chairperson of this committee? Are there any other members for the last time of the Democratic Alliance who wish to express their vote of support in favor of Honorable M. Wenger being the chairperson of this committee? This is the last time. Okay. We move yes, on yes, then. Yes, me, Ricardo. Ricardo. Honorable, Honorable McKenzie, you are an alternate member. Who are you standing yes, in? Yes, I'm standing in for Wendy Philander. Okay, Honorable, Honorable McKenzie, you say you are standing in for Honorable Philander. Can you please express your vote? Yes, uh, I'm voting for Member M. Wenger. He's a six-year veteran of this parliament and has more experience than the other candidates. So I'm voting for M. Wenger and I fully support the proposal by Member Dylan Mitchell. Thank you, Honorable McKenzie. Just to confirm, Honorable R. McKenzie from the Democratic Alliance, who is standing in as an alternate member for Honorable W. Philander, has voted in support of the nomination <laughs> of Honorable M. Wenger as chairperson of this committee. Can we so now just move on a point, on? Just on a point of order, <laughs> Secretary. Yes. yes, sir. Secretary, just on a point of order, can I just get clarity? Um, on my screen, I see that Honorable Philander... Yes. Um, has been participating in this meeting, okay? And now we've just heard that Honorable McKenzie is an alternate saying that he's standing in for Honorable Philander, but she's actually in this meeting. So I, I just want to get some clarity as to what's actually going on here. Uh, Thank you. Person, Thank if you. I may. Just, just all quickly, just all quickly, just all quickly, Honorable McKenzie. Thank you, Honorable Dagmo. Honorable... W. Philander, are you still in this meeting and participating in this meeting? For the last time, Honorable W. Philander, are you still in this meeting and participating in this meeting? Okay. Mr. Secretary, I, Mr. Secretary. Honorable Allen, just how quickly, Honorable Dagmo, I had asked the question twice. There's been no response from Honorable Philander. 
it is then clear from my side that she is no longer present and or participating in this meeting. I now recognize Honorable McKenzie, who was first Honorable Allen, and then I'll recognize you afterwards. Honorable McKenzie. Yes. Yes, Honorable Secretary, as normal, as an alternate member, I'm standing in for me Member Philander, who unfortunately, due to internet problems, cannot be part of this meeting. So in terms of the rules, I am now a full member of this committee. Yes, I'm now standing in for Member Philander, and my vote therefore counts. Thank you, Honorable McKenzie. Honorable Allen, you are recognized. I'm covered, sir. Thank you so much, Ms. Um, uh, Wendy Philander is experiencing technical issues at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable right. Honorable Dagmoor, that's been the explanation. I had asked the question twice, there's been no response, and therefore, because of technical reasons, Honorable Philander is no longer in the meeting and or participating in this meeting. Okay, we are moving. The last vote that was recorded was from Honorable McKenzie. Can we move from the Democratic Alliance to any of the other parties now? I Secretary, uh, yes. Member Christians? Yes, Member Christians. Uh, Secretary, Secretary, as I know, only you only have one vote and all the opposition parties has already voted, uh, except the Economic Freedom Front, uh, Economic Freedom Fighters. I think it's absent, but each and every member did vote, so you don't have to go through the list because we have all have voted. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Christians. If you would then just allow me just to go through the list, I'll call once, I'll call twice. If there's no response, we'll then move on. So I am at the African National Congress. Is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Murray Wenger from the Democratic Alliance as chairperson of this ad hoc committee going once? Going twice. I move on to the next party. I call on the member of the Economic Freedom Fighters. Is there any support for the nomination of Honorable Murray Wenger as chairperson of this ad hoc committee going once? No. Going twice. There is no support. Thank you, Honorable Krejo, who has clearly indicated there is no support for this nomination. I then now go to the smaller parties. I'll call once and twice. The good party for the nomination of Honorable Wenger as chairperson of this committee going once? No. Going twice. I move on to the next party. The ACDP support for nomination of Honorable Wenger as chairperson of this ad hoc committee going once? Going twice. I call on the Freedom Front Plus. Uh, if there's any support for the nomination of Honorable Murray Wenger as chairperson of this committee going once? Going twice, okay. The Al Jamar is not part of this meeting, okay. The voting has now closed for both nominations. I am going to ask the procedural officer, Ms. Zahida um, Adams, just to share with us what are the tallies for both nominations. So it's the number of votes cast for Honorable Brett Heron from the Good Party, and then also the number of votes passed for Honorable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance. Ms. Adams, can you please share with us? Thank you, Secretary. Good morning, members. Um, for the nomination of Member Hedden, there were six votes in favor, and for the nomination of Member Wenger, there were eight votes in favor. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Adams, the procedural officer. So there were six votes and eight votes that gets us to six and eight gets us to 14 votes that have been casted. I therefore, in terms of rule 85 and the standing rules of the Western Cape Provincial Parliament, March 2019, declare Honorable M. Wenger from the Democratic Alliance duly elected as chairperson of this ad hoc committee. Honorable Wemger, without any further ado, I now hand over the chairpersonship of this committee to you as the duly elected chairperson. Thank you very much and thank you to all of the parties and all of the members for their participation in this election. Thank you, Honorable Wenger. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary, for having um, conducted the process. Good morning, members and um, uh, I think it's a very important committee that we have now established. I'm um, very pleased that it has uh, so many uh, parties participating in it. Um, I thought as a first um, 
action as this committee, we could agree on a, a certain number of themes that this committee could deal with um, as part of its work and then uh, invite uh, members of the committee to submit issues that they would like the committee to deal with under the banner of those themes that we agree to in this meeting. Uh, could we um, proceed um, with that as a first agenda item? Um, the second then agenda item would be to look at the next meeting. Uh, and third, uh, to discuss how frequently this meeting uh, sh should convene. Are there any objections to those three uh, agenda items that I'd like to table now? No. So, Vesta, no. Okay. Right. Thank you. We'll then proceed. Sorry, to sorry. I've, I've been chair. So I just had my hand up. What's the best way just to indicate like this or how would you like us to do this? Um, I can't see your hands, so um, they are now, yeah, now that your cameras come on. Um, I think the, the easiest is to proceed for now in a similar manner to uh, what the Secretary has done. If you would say your name uh, so that you can then be recognised and, um, okay. and then have a speaking opportunity. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I don't um, object to the items that you've listed, but I want to... Um, propose uh, an urgent uh, matter um, as the first item on the agenda and uh, that particular proposal is that we convene we take a discussion now at this meeting about the crisis in regard to food security and the distribution of um, food parcels and I would request that we ask um, yourself as the chair to communicate with MEC Fernandez ask her to join us in this meeting so that we can begin to raise the concerns and look at some solutions to this very serious problem. Okay. Thank you for that input, Honourable Dagmore. I think there are a number of items that are urgent and critical that this committee has to look at with haste and urgently. Um, I think if we could proceed in an orderly fashion to agree on the themes first as this multi-party committee, we will then have a good idea of what we have on the table and then which items we tackle first uh, and which ones are the most urgent. We will then um, contact the relevant um, MECs and heads of department to make sure they come and present to this committee and answer all the questions uh, necessary. Chair? So, who's that? Um, Chair, this is Sayed. Khalid I'm Sayed. Sayed. I'm, Sayed. Um, I'm not sure whether you saw my hand, but yeah, I just thought I'll just make a short input, Chair. Sorry for that. Um, Thank you. I do agree um, with the matters listed um, in terms of how the meeting is going to proceed, and I agree with the approach. I just wanted to also indicate that could we perhaps also discuss as part of the agenda items um, our approach as to how are we going to ensure that the media and the public um, can actually be filled in um, um, basically with regards to the discussions if they I mean basically um, it would be good if they can even be witnessing these discussions so maybe we could have that also as one of the agenda items just to Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honourable Syed. Um, just one moment. Uh, Honourable Syed, I think you make a very good point. Uh, the Standing Committee should be open um, and um, we can uh, I can table that as a, as a discussion and we can also get information from the WCPP on how that can be done. I understand there are ways and means for um, this forum and this platform to become um, or to be um, broadcast as it were um, but certainly we will make that then agenda item number four um, and um, certainly I don't think anybody would disagree. Uh, there was another input. Uh, could you say your name please? Deirdre Bartman. Deirdre Bartman, please proceed. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I wanted to propose a theme of economic recovery and support. Um, yeah, thank you. Freedom away, Freedom Front. Honorable Marais, please proceed. 
I think we've got to decide whether we want to discuss the what or the how. The what has been determined by the uh, uh, Disaster Management Act, what we should do. And then the how the provinces are, are in charge of how they're going to do it. So we want to hear what is the Intergovernmental Committee doing on disaster. We also want to discuss the Provincial Disaster Management Advising Forum's advice that they gave to the Premier and his cabinet. What advice did they get? How to do food distribution? Blah, blah, blah. So in which way are we going to be able to, to, to hear from the Provincial Disaster Management Advisory Forum established in terms of Section 31 and, and 45A of the, of, the, of the Disaster Management Act? Those are the bodies we want to hear from. What advice did you give us and what plans have you got in store? Thank you, Honourable Marie. Um, I, um, I take note of that uh, request for uh, work for the committee to deal with. What I'm going to do is, in your chat bar, um, I'm going to put a list of proposed themes. Um, I've just added um, Honourable Bartman's one to the list. I've just, if you just give me one moment, and um, then everyone can have a look in the chat what the proposed themes are. They are broad themes, um, which I'd like us then to discuss and to see if everyone agrees. And then under those, there obviously come a plethora of um, issues within each of those themes. So if we could have a look at these themes, it should be uh, in the chat now. Um, so for members that are not familiar with the platform, if you put your mouse in the middle of the screen, um, you'll see a, a, an, a bar comes up with the camera, the mute, uh, there's the three dots, and then it will, and then there's a speech bubble for conversation, yes, uh, for conversations, that's the chat bar. Um, I see Honorable Dugmore has found it. Um, and if you click on that, on the right hand side, a menu will come up. I've just placed those themes on there. But for everyone's benefit, I will read them out now. The first uh, proposed theme is the health department responses and preparations. This is in no particular order. Health department responses and preparations. Two, policing, security and police brutality. Three, food security. Four, protection of the vulnerable. Five, disaster management and local government oversight. Six, economic recovery and support. Seven, transport. Eight, schooling and education. Nine, human settlements. And 10, citizen surveillance. Uh, Heron. Uh, Honorable Heron, please proceed. Thanks, Chairperson. I, I don't have a problem with the 10 themes. I'm just, I have a particular issue that, but I'm not sure if it falls in any of these 10 themes, and that's around informal food trading. Unless we agree that it falls under either protection of the vulnerable, food security, or if we can extend economic recovery and support to um, include livelihoods. Okay, uh, I like that proposal. So if I could then change number six to economic recovery, support, and livelihoods. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, just give me one moment. I'm going to retable it. Um, Chair, I'm also just member Dugmore. I'm also just adding a list here: intergovernmental relations and cooperative governance, which is a broader theme. I think it links to what Honourable Member Mare was saying. We actually want to actually know. We've got a major uh, concern as um, the ANC that you know, despite repeated requests for the Premier himself, just like the President has done, where the President convened the leaders of political parties at a national level that up until today on where are we now day 22 that the premier has never met with any of the political parties as we've so the whole notion of intergovernmental relations cooperative governance also deals with the issue of local municipalities what structures command centers joint operation centers so that whole issue is important and then 
Um, I'm just trying to see your 10 themes all in one because I can only see bits of them. But the issue of food security and also care for the homeless and also um, gender-based violence, I think, is another um, issue. Um, so, uh, Honourable Dagmar, I will add in number 11. Oh, one moment, please. I will add number 11 into governmental relations. Um, uh, domestic violence can fall under number four, protection of the vulnerable. Um, and I think you had another item that does fall within one of those themes. Okay, for the homeless. Yes, protection of the vulnerable. <laughs> if we, we could add that under that theme. And food security, where are you putting that? It's number three. These are no particular order, but just these are the broad themes. Should I read them again yeah. for the benefit of the committee? One, health. Yeah, I department. wonder, can I just, chair, chair, chairperson, could I just maybe could you get some technical advice? I'm seeing your themes, but I can't seem to see them all together. I only see like three. Am I doing something wrong technically here? If you look at the bottom, would it say see more? If you click on see more at the bottom. Yeah, okay. Is it working now? Okay, um, I'm trying. I'm sorry. No, okay, just just proceed, ma'am. Uh, Chair, I'm sorry. I, I'll I'll try and work it out. Yeah. Okay. What I will do is, are there any objections to these themes? Then I'm going to read them out one more time. Um. Person. Health person calling. Um. Calling questions. Uh, thank you, Chair, honourable questions. Please proceed. Honourable Christian. No, no, I, ju I just wanted, yes, thank you very much, Chief Person. I just wanted to say, I don't know, I know uh, Honourable Dagmo mentioned um, intergovernmental relations and he spoke about the homeless, but I want us to put us at gender point differently on the Stramfontein matter. Um, I had a lot of calls. I wanted to go there, but then I saw access was denied so so i didn't want to go there without discussing this first um so so i've received quite a number of complaints and i was hesitant to go there because i be, i believe that when i saw on social media people were denied access so i just wanted to to place that under the homeless but definitely the stramfontein uh, matter for the homeless because we hear a lot of stories it's not good uh, you know, that we hear. So I just want us to maybe just also just factor that in and see how we're going to do deal with that uh, chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable Christians. Um, would you think it would be fair to include that under the theme of protection of the vulnerable? Yes, you, we can put it in protection of the vulnerable, but, but like I said, I don't want us to, uh, I, I, I agree with you, but I just want us to make, uh, because there's a lot of, you know, the media gives a, a different perspective. So they had a councillor, uh, not a uh, uh, not a, uh, a city councillor, but a people that councils people. She had a lot of bad things to say. So when I wanted to go into uh, to there, I heard that people were blocked. So I just think Stramwoodin is an urgent matter and that thing is going to explode. So I just wanted that to, if you put the vulnerable, that we just have a bracket there, Stramwoodin, a uh, place for the homeless. So the, um, so the thinking is, um, if I could just respond to Honourable Christians first, is that we agree on these broad themes. Okay, that should. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. And uh, good morning to all members. I, I think I've just been struggling to to come on, to tune in and speak. I wanted to add uh, in the issues, or maybe it could be integrated somewhere, but as part of the themes, um, if you can add finance and, and budgets, because I think at this point, we're all aware that uh, the whole issue of the lockdown is putting pressure on public resources, you know, and we had already have passed a budget, you know, both ourselves and including municipalities and municipalities already now, it's financially end is about to come so obviously this has got serious implications to finance um, and, and, and budget so if we can have that particular theme also included um, uh, in, in the ones that we've already identified thank you chair okay um, are there I think that's a good proposal are there any objections none okay so now the themes look like this I've added that as a number 12 government finance and budgets Okay, um, can we then, McKenzie? Honourable McKenzie, proceed. Chairperson, perhaps that we can also create a WhatsApp group 
where these themes can be just be shared with everyone because I don't think people can see the, the, the full screen of the chat on the right hand side. Okay, um, right. Uh, so what I'll do is if we all agree to the themes, I will ask the procedural officers to circulate the 12 themes. So all the members have them. Um, and then, um, you know, members can use that as their framework in developing the issues under each of those themes that they'd like the, the committee to, um, to work on. Can we okay. then agree to those 12 themes? Yeah. Are there any objections? Yes. I agree. Yes. Yes. Are there any objections? No objections. Right. Thank you very much, members. We then have those 12 themes as the work of the committee. I, uh, I'm sorry. I, you didn't hear me. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, uh, Honourable Marie. Please. please proceed. We, I have a problem with people that is not on our radar screen. Everybody who gets a Sasa grant is on the radar. We know who they are. Anybody who is uh, entitled to UIF, we know who they are. They're on our radar. But they are people who fall off the cliff because they neither uh, Sasa recipients and at the same time, they don't even uh, qualify for UIF. Now, we haven't got them. We don't know about them. They're off the radar. They're flying low. So I want to know what are we going to do with them? We don't even have a cell phone to phone all those numbers we're giving them. I want to know what are we doing with people who currently fly under the economic radar that we don't know about them, but they're really suffering poverty and hardship. Thank you, Honourable Marie, for that uh, input. Could we perhaps put that issue under um, protection of the vulnerable or possibly even under food security? Yeah, Chairperson. Chairperson. Yes, I would agree to that. Yeah. Thank you, Honourable no, Marie. Thank you, Chair. No, I just wanted, because I'm just battling to see those 12, how you form it. I think the issue of intergovernmental relations is, I, I'd also raised earlier in a written suggestion here, that it should be an cooperative government. And I think what we're missing, because I was trying to, and I think I was muted, um, our involvement of communities and civil society and NGOs, um, that could we put that under the issue of intergovernmental, or as a separate point, actually. You know, how are we working with community, civil society, and NGOs? I think it's absolutely critical that we, 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 we look at that. There's a lot of people that want to help at different levels, and I think we should have a discussion. So I would appeal, I know you, I don't, I'm not disputing your summary, but I think, so what I'm saying is if we could formulate um, in intergovernmental relations and cooperative government, but have a separate point, Chair, maybe number 13, as community participation in the fight against the pand pandemic. Yeah, uh, Dagmar, I'm going to propose that we put it under number 11, and number 11 then becomes intergovernmental relations and community cooperation. And cooperative Can you agree government. to that? Yeah, and yeah. cooperative government, yeah. Can we just call it public yep. participation, Chairperson? Okay. All right. Okay. So um, we then have um, a kind of a rough uh, spectrum of themes that the committee will deal with. I now formally ask members um, to take these themes and look at the issues within each theme that you would like the committee to deal with. Uh, and if you could table that... Um, uh, at the next meeting, or if it could be emailed to the procedural officers and myself, then we can start putting it together in a plan to table at the next meeting. Um, then moving on to the next agenda item um, is the um, the next uh, meeting of this committee. I would like to sorry, propose that is given... Here. Sorry, is there an objection? Uh, yeah, it's Brett here, I'm sorry. Proceed, Honourable Heron. I just want to understand what you're saying is that we're just listing the themes now and the issues should be raised later. And I'm wondering why we don't identify some of the issues now so that the departments can respond by the next meeting. Okay. 
What I'd like is because it's quite a broad, um, there's quite a lot of themes. Um, uh, certainly, um, I would appreciate some time to go and um, study these, uh, do the relevant homework and put together um, good proposals for each of those themes. Um, we will work very quickly to put this together into a program of action. But what I'd like to then propose that for the first meeting, which, uh, which should be um, within the next few days, um, and I hope it will carry favour with the committee that we, um, you know, considering that this is first and foremost a health crisis um, that is led by the Department of Health, that we call um, the Premier, the Director General, the MEC for Health and the HOD of Health to come and give us a situation report so that we have an idea of um, where we are and the lay of the land and that might also help inform some of the issues that we um, that we'd like to look at, um, and then um, at the at that same meeting, look at our program as per the inputs received. Chairperson, uh, uh, member Fallon Christians, honourable Christians, please proceed. Uh, Chairperson, I don't have a problem with that, but there is a major need. And the major need that we have at the moment is food security. Uh, people is now starting uh, to loot shops. People is now, you can't, cannot even go into a community be, to, to deliver food because you are, uh, you know, you are robbed uh, because of the desperation of people being hungry. Uh, so we get, I did speak to MEC Fernandez uh, previously and and uh, so so we get and I know all the members is getting calls. Uh, we've worked with NGOs to uh, supply food to people. Uh, we've done that as a party and as public reps. But I think one of the major problems that we have is the food security. People are phoning into the helpline for social services. The the numbers that uh, MEC Fernandez gave, they don't get through to these numbers. People don't return their calls uh, and all of this. So there's a big crisis there. Even people accessing the 50,000 uh, food, uh, um, the food that was made available. So food security is a big thing, and also um, uh, the Department of uh, uh, of Minister Fernandez is also not responding to the calls. People are not getting calls. They are phoning. They are not phoned back, and all of so there's a big problem, and it's all about food security, uh, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Chairperson, Chairperson, if I may. Chairperson. Okay, um, there was a lot of overlap there. Who would like to speak? Uh, Eric. I hear Honourable Mitchell. Let's yes, start thank with you. you. Then Honourable America. Um, then Honourable Heron. Then Honourable Philander. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Chair, I want to 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 support the proposal um, that we get the depart uh, the Premier and the DG in to brief us to give us an overview of of the current situation in the province. Um, Chair, um, I, I I want to I want to 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 echo the fact that we are we are dealing with a with a health crisis or a pandemic and everything else which is as important stems from that that that. Mm -hmm. um, so from the from this pandemic that we're dealing with. So I want to suggest that we we get an overview from the premier and the DG, and then everything else that stems from that, um, we then put to get we put on. Um, and I'm not disputing that food security is, uh, is is it's an issue and it's it's important, but that we first get an overview and then we take it from there. Thank you, Honourable America. Um. Thank you, Chair. I think I'm, I'm covered by Honourable uh, Mitchell. Um, I do not wish to delay the meeting, but I, I agree that there are many urgent issues that need to uh, be looked at. But I think that the Premier will provide us with a bird's eye view as to what is currently happening, because mm. we need not to confuse um, the our role as merely the city of Cape Town or the metro. The Premier will give us an overview of what's happening provincial-wide, and I think that would inform us better in terms of what we need to do forward. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable America. Honourable Heron. I will, 
Uh, well, uh, Honourable Heron, then Honourable Philander, then Honourable Marie. I'm uh, starting with you, Honourable Heron. Thank you, Chairperson. Am I, it's obviously a, um, a health crisis, but I think if we're going to, at our next meeting, get an, a briefing on what the province has been doing, we're getting that anyway, every day, um, through all the communication channels. But there are crises that are propping up throughout the province. And if we don't um, add those to the agenda, I think we're going to be failing. We, this, I mean, we need to treat these crises as urgent. And if we can make sure, I mean, I would propose that the crises at the moment fall within health and social development, and that the Premier, the MEC for Health, and the MEC for Social Development should be present at the next meeting. And so we can also raise these crises that are emerging and not just get a briefing on what the province has been doing, because we're getting that anyway in the communications that the province is putting out. So I really think it's important that we move to the to the emergencies and the crises and not get a briefing on what what the um, the province is doing. Um, just to clarify, the proposal was to get a situation report from the Premier and DG, but also from the MEC of Health and the HOD of Health um, together. Um, so that does partly cover um, one of your concerns. Um, Honourable yeah. Philander. Um, thank you, I, Chairperson. Um, I could also join um, the speaker's um, list. Sorry? If I I'll, I'll note you speaker. afterwards, Honourable Dagmar. Um, Honourable Philander, please proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm partially covered by Member um, Mitchell. Um, Chair, I wish to concur with the sentiment that um, having um, addressed by being addressed by the Premier, the DG, the MEC and the HOD, I think that is the perfect way in which we can establish the ground as it is current um, Chairperson. And what emanates from that, um, I'm sure we all are aware of the dire need outside in our communities, as mentioned. And we don't take any, anything away from that or, or disregard the importance thereof. But I do um, wish to concur with the sentiment that it is important that we establish the ground at this point, Chairperson, and that we allow for those mentioned to, to address the committee and whatever emanates from that, we can then further address as a committee. Chairperson, I also believe that um, your, your timeline in terms of that is sufficient and therefore one can realise that you do see the importance of. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honourable Philander. Honourable Murray. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. I think that we have spoken a lot about the fourth industrial revolution, but we are idling between the second and third revolution in the way we are doing food distribution and how we're tackling it. Uh, people are asked to phone uh, and certain numbers and then they have eight or more options. By the time they get to their option, they got no more airtime. I think that we, we, we're doing things in a lopsided manner. We must learn from the supermarkets. Why don't we have a, an agreement with ShopRite checkers and pick and pay where people just get the food voucher if they, if they have their ID numbers on the system? We need to find out how can we get the IT people involved to speed up things. If we, dis, if we uh, 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 take food to a certain house in a certain street, the rest of the people didn't get. You are causing chaos. People are fighting over food. They say this is politically driven. Why do you get it? Is it because you vote for this party or for that party and I didn't get? We're causing chaos and dissent in the communities. Whereas if we let the people decide on what foods they need, we decide for them now. We don't care what people's dietary needs are. We just decide you eat that or you eat this. Maybe they are... Um, diabetic, maybe they the people don't like certain foods. Why don't we leave, leave that choice to the person to, to decide when he has the food voucher what he needs desperately? I've had calls from women saying they got no kimpies for argument's sake. For their babies, the children walk naked and they can't get out. And when they get to the supermarket, they say that this is not essential stuff. So I say, let us get the IT people also involved. How can we gear up our system? Thank you for that input, Honourable Marie. Um, uh, then, uh, it's then Honourable Bosman, Honourable Dagmo, Honourable Bartman. Uh, let's start with you, Honourable Bosman. 
Thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to check in terms of um, asking for briefings, will we also extend that to national government um, as well, as well as the um, social uh, security agency, because there are certain limitations in law which the Department of Social Development cannot respond to. And during a time of disaster, a time of this crisis, there's a specific role that SASA needs to play. Um, so I just wanted to check whether the committee is open to also involving SASA and trying to get an understanding of what their response has been, because from my surveying of the land, that's been the most ad hoc. Thank you, Honourable Bosman. Honourable Doug Moore? Um, thank you very much, um, Chair. I just I also wanted to ask generally, you know, we, we see the meeting chat, um, which you've used, um, you know, in the process of like getting the themes and so on. I've also been adding a number of issues there. And I just wonder if it's possible that, because I think we're moving towards a situation where the first meeting we want is with the Premier, the DG, and I think people have argued particularly for the health MEC and the social development MEC to be there. But could we also, using this chat, um, ask the, the the committee support to record these items into the minutes so that these are actually then regarded as requests for information so that the MECs can be prepared, um, you know, when they come here, that we actually want answers to these um, particular issues. And obviously, when we finish this chat, we can also email our questions. So I'm sure you're going to help us now when we get to the timeframes of when you want information from us, when the meeting is going to happen. Um, so that was just one thing I'd like to ask for um, your your guidance on. And then also just ask, you know, earlier on in this um, discussion, I noticed there was someone in a waiting room and it said their parliamentary, I think, what's that parliamentary monitoring group? Um, you know, they sometimes come and monitor our committees. And then I, I, can I just wanted to clarify, as we are speaking now, is that parliamentary monitoring group actually monitoring this conversation and then I also just wanted to request link to member Saeed's, Honourable Saeed's proposal. Um, can we also just agree as a committee that this um, meeting um, and the and and the, the the recording, I'm not sure if we're recording this, this meeting, but that this meeting um, from the outset can be made available to any members of the media who actually want to cover um, what the first meeting of the ad hoc committee has done, you know, and also to share with them you know, the, the chats that we're having here so they can see what are the issues that the members are raising. Yeah, thank you, Honourable Dagmar. I'll add that under agenda item number four. Uh, Honourable Bartman. Sure, can that be added to the thank line, you, Chairperson. please? Sayed. Thank you, Chairperson. Firstly, I would like to agree with Honourable Bosma not only regarding calling possibly SASA, but because there are other national entities that are working with provincial entities on various different issues that we keep an open mind in terms of calling them before the committee for briefings as well or together with the provincial um, partners. Um, I would like to suggest that going forward that we email our specific issues to you as chairperson yeah. because I myself as constituency head but also someone within the economic class that have all of my own issues that I would like to raise. But I think that if every single person raises all of those issues right now, that we might not necessarily be able to get through this meeting and it might be more productive to email all of those to you chairperson or to the procedural officer as well as the fact that for us to just remember that the city of Cape Town is also not the Western Cape and we must also not forget about the rural areas. And especially yeah. as constituency is from rural areas, we must please ensure that those rural areas are not left behind in this COVID-19 ad hoc committee in terms of people only wanting to focus on the metro particularly. That is my contribution, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Smith. Yes. <clears throat> Chairperson, I just wanted to... to understand that um, after the deliberations and that the Premier and the, and the HODs must come in and the MEC to, to, to give us an overview of the provincial um, situation, what, did you guys agree on a time frame for, the, for, for this committee to, to meet on a, on a regular basis? Is it going to, did we get that proposal from you? Thank you. Um, not yet, but it is on the agenda for us to discuss next. Um, so we will get there shortly. Honourable Syed. Yeah. <clears throat> Chair, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, in line with the discussions, um, I see there's a, this, the, 
There's a discussion taking place um, already taking us into some of the specifics. I can understand why members are getting into that given the fact that there are burning issues. But I want to agree more with the approach is that let's for now look at themes that we can take into the next meeting. But I want to also propose that in line with that, I see there's a proposal to say we start off with the Premier and the MEC of Health and the HOD and the DG. Let us then also, because if I'm listening to the themes that are being listed, I actually think it opens us, uh, us up to a space where perhaps in each meeting going forward, we can have a presentation from a specific MEC and department. So you can have, for example, I hear issues around city of Cape Town and various other municipalities and intergovernmental stuff. We can then have MEC for, for local government and the HOD there. We can have MEC for social development as well as SASA. So when we think we need to also have a national element to it, we then have the provincial MEC, the head of department, and also bring somebody from the national department to also speak to an issue. And then we engage around those. So those themes can then be focused on by members as opposed to just emailing. I understand the approach for email and it's good. Let's keep that going. But I think the uh, emailing of themes and the raising of themes is also going to speak to presentations and, and uh, that, the, 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 that the various departments do specifically. On that note, I want to also propose that when we do call MECs in the departments, if we could get the presentations a couple of days before the meeting, so that members can interrogate those, list the questions. Um, so, so so that these meetings can take place in a focused manner, in the same way in which meetings actually take place in the legislature, and we can then have outcomes based on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Syed. Um, all right, uh, Honourable Mackenzie, and then um, then we'll hopefully conclude this item. Honourable Mackenzie, please proceed. Thank you, Chairperson, and, and thank you to Member Khalid. Um, I would fully support his proposal and Deirdre Bartman because one meeting with one MEC, I can assure you, Mitchell's Plain Hospital on its own will take three hours. So if we have four or five MECs at one meeting, we're not going to get the desired outcome. Let it be one MEC, we, we, we can email our questions and themes. Obviously, we'll ask pertinent and very important questions during the presentations, but that we do start to focus down and uh, on an issue driven, because Strandfontein in itself will take a half day meeting. So I really want us to, to I, I fully support the themes and, and I'll email my, my, my questions through, but I do want us to, when we have one, the Premier coming, for example, the DG of the province, that we don't add four or five MECs to that meeting because we're not going to get a desired outcome. Chairperson, right I want to just come in, Peter. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We have to do this in an orderly fashion. Right. Um, I heard uh, Honourable Heron and Honourable Murray, and then um, can I then summarise after that? Honourable Heron, please proceed. Uh, I, have submit, I have submitted my name on the sidebar. Uh, apologies, Honourable Kondlo, I didn't see that. So um, it will have Honourable Heron, uh, Murray, and then Kondlo. Honourable Heron, uh, please proceed. Thank you, Chairperson. I, and I, I mean, I've, I appreciate all the comments, and I... I mean, if we're going to agree that we, at, the, at the, the next meeting, have a briefing by the Premier and one MEC, then I would like to propose that the MEC is the, the MEC for social development. I think that the, the, you know, to get a briefing on the testing and all that stuff is, is important, but what we're seeing right now across the province, and I'm not just talking about the metro, is a humanitarian crisis. So the, the health, the testing, and what the plans are for testing and what the results are are, are interesting, and we need to know that that there's containment, but the pressing issues right now are humanitarian issues. And in particular, you've heard it from other members, food security is a massive issue. And I think that we need to, if we're only going to have one MEC with the Premier, can I please propose that it's the MEC for social development first, and then we can get health thereafter. We cannot ignore the, the, the food issues, the, the food relief issues, um, and we need to hear from the social development MEC um, who is responsible for distributing food relief and how it's been distributed between the three spheres of government. Please, I, I urge that we we don't ignore that issue. 
Um, Honourable Marie. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, there's something which okay. we left out of this, and I mentioned the one. The one I mentioned that the speaker or the chairman didn't pick up was I asked, when are we going to hear who is the provincial disaster management advisory team for them? Who are they and what advice have they been given? But the most important thing is our budget committee, Rule 114. It says they must make, uh, uh, consider and make recommendations to the to us on receiving, on spending patterns involving public, the public. Uh, uh, what are the spending patterns at the moment? What are we spending on here to relieve poverty and to fight this virus? That, did the budget committee come up with alternates? Is there a reason for the intervention in that respect? We haven't heard from the budget committee. Uh, shouldn't they also be called in to say, what have you got there? What monies have we got to spend where? And how are we going to spend that money? Where is it needed mostly? Thank you, Speaker. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Honourable Murray. Uh, Honourable Nkondlo? Derek. Derek. Um, Thank, you, you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I support, I think, um, generally what the members have uh, uh, suggested. I just wanted also to reaffirm, I think uh, uh, what was raised earlier on, the submissions that uh, per theme that you requested be made, maybe if you can give an indication of the timeline for that, because I believe that those particular submissions, in a way, must also help uh, to give, uh, you know, some kind of guidance to the Premier, you know, who is going to be speaking on, on broad, you know, issues of the province. So if those particular submissions can at least precede um, that uh, meeting where the Premier is going to respond, so that at least he can have hindsight of such uh, inputs. So that's the first issue, Chair. Uh, and, and I support fully, uh, I think, the the priority about social relief and issues of health. But I think I, I would also want to urge balance that um, part of the challenge that you are seeing is that whilst, you know, there's a pressure for people, you know, in as far as food parcels and everything, it is because in the main, you know, majority of the trade and um, sort of work uh, has actually been locked down. So we also need to be able to get a clear understanding, you know, of the livelihoods, um, partly what uh, Member Bartman spoke about, economic response, but I would think it's something that we need to sort of prioritise. Already there's a regulation in regard to informal traders, to SMMEs and type of essential uh, trading activities. We need to know what are those, how have we been panning out in the province, you know, in terms of still and ensuring streaming of some level of income, both from companies but also from individuals who are working in those spaces. So I just wanted to raise those for me, you know, as some of the issues that we would need to add. If you can just give us an indication by when should we make these submissions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Mondo. Uh, Honourable America. Thank you, Chair. Chair, uh, I think part, <coughs> part of the reason why we have this meeting today is because we all had different locations because of the lockdown. And I think that uh, we should not um, forget the, the, the ultimate goal for us as a country, for us as a province, for our people to get out of the situation where they find themselves in is the termination of the lockdown. And the termination of the lockdown will largely be dependent upon the, the spread of the transmission. And the health department will give us a perspective in terms of how the community spread, which is the greatest threat to uh, the continuation of the lockdown and food security and economic security and recovery, um, where we find the ourselves in this politicians. space. But notwithstanding that, what Honorable Heron was saying is very important in the sense that um, during this particular phase, um, people are food insecure. If I could then uh, summarise. Um, so it's quite clear that um, members have a lot of very important and uh, some um, urgent issues that the committee needs to deal with. There have been many, many issues raised by many of you, and I thank you for that. 
Um, and uh, we would like the committee to be able to deal with all of these issues. Um, they, however, must be done in an organized way so that we can do our work as thoroughly as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Taking from the comments, um, how we will then proceed is that we have agreed to the themes. I'm going to ask members by latest Monday to submit their issues within those themes, and that will include the presentation by the Premier and DG for next week. So if you, there are specific items in addition to the situation report, please do so then. What I will then do is um, compile all the inputs from the members uh, into a draft proposal for how we do the work. Um, so then I would like to then, uh, taking from what members say, propose that the committee, uh, at least for, the, for now, meets twice a week and propose then that we meet again next week Wednesday and next week Friday, um, obviously with the um, concurrence of the programming authority on Tuesday morning. Um, so if we can then proceed that we uh, meet on Wednesday, um, uh, I'll just check on the times and confirm with you all, on Wednesday to have a briefing then from the Premier, the DG and then the Health Department, considering this is a health crisis. And then um, taking from what members are saying, we should look at food security as our first uh, then theme, which would then take place on Friday. And within that theme, um, all these social development issues that were raised can come into that meeting. And I will have then received um, what, uh, what those items are that you want to deal with within that theme. Um, and um, I will put that together into a draft program of action for the committee, which we will then discuss and confirm at Wednesday's meeting for Friday and beyond. Are there any objections to that approach? None. Okay. Thank you very much, members. Then, um, if, um, as I said, if they could please be put in writing, so I don't know that the. Sorry, I would like to object. I'd like to object. I'd like oh, hang to on, there's too many people speaking. Is an objection, like Honourable Dagmore? Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. I think there's been more than adequate motivation that for the first meeting that you are proposing for, for Wednesday, that, that, that it's very clear that the vast majority who participate in this discussion wanted the first meeting to have the Premier the HOD and two MECs. I mean, we cannot, you know, actually be blind to this. The Every day that goes by when this food security issue um, is not resolved because of, I would argue, absolute bungling by the Department of Social Development in terms of their hotlines that they've set up, we're creating a further crisis. I think it's just simply not acceptable that after this discussion, we cannot have a decision which says we want the Premier and those two MECs. Let's get the, I agree with health, but there's been strong motivations. And I see we go back now to why in the beginning we have proposed an opposition person to chair. Because what's happening here oh. is bias. Chair, I must know, please, no, I'm, I'm, on the floor. I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor. I call you to order. There have been proposals from opposition members that if we have two meetings next week, we can split them up. Also, there have been more than 20 issues raised, um, and in, in order for us to do it in an orderly way, and in order to be thorough, a meeting on its own with the Department of Social Development under the theme of food security is not biased. It is it's literally a, week, a day a later, and it it's would allow all late. members to be able to late. table all of the issues that they have raised. Uh -huh. There a are a lot of issues in food, food security. security. A specific discussion on Wednesday on just the food security component plus health. Can we please Honourable do that, point Chair? Order, Chairperson. Honourable Bartman. Chairperson, you were elected as okay. Chairperson of this committee, and I find it very insulting when we start shouting over you in order to be able to have our opinions heard. You as Chair need to recognize when someone is speaking, and then we should be speaking. We can't just, because this is a virtual meeting, say that now all of the rules fly out of the window, Chairperson. I thought I was still on the floor. Um, I, have I been, I, I thought I was still on the floor. You may proceed. There was a point of order. 
Okay, thank you, Chairperson. That's so, point Chairperson, of just orders now automatically. Is that a point of order, Honourable Murray? Yes, I want to know whether in this meeting points of order in terms of the rules are valid. Of this course is, they are. No, this is no time for points of order, yeah? You just raised one. Oh, I start, please. Okay, Honourable okay. Dagmar, proceed, please. Thank you. Um, so, Chairperson, just to, to summarise, and I'm sorry if I gave an impression, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to understand you called me on a point of order and thank you for giving me the opportunity to continue. I, I want to make clear that we support your proposal about Monday, that we must submit the detail of what we want to discuss under the theme. So that one is no support that. But what I'm requesting, Chair, is that um, you've indicated that at the meeting on Wednesday, we will have the Premier, the HOD, and also the MEC for Health. But what we are appealing to you for is that there are a lot of issues around social development, but the critical one that is causing um, a lot of uh, stress and confusion and the potential for conflict is food, the food security component of social development. So could we repeat our request that at the Wednesday meeting that you've proposed that the food components uh, of social development is on that agenda, not the whole of social development, but just that aspect. That's what we would like uh, to, to propose. And then obviously we support the idea of a Friday meeting to then deal with more detail um, on, on, on issues around social development. And then I would suggest the third one be on the economy. Um, so, Chair, that is my formal proposal to please include that item for the Wednesday meeting. So I don't think it would be feasible to include it in the same meeting. However, what we can do is have two meetings on Wednesday instead of doing Wednesday and Friday, in which case um, if members would please provide all of the issues under food security that you would like the committee to deal with. Um, and then that would need to be with me by noon on Monday um, so that we have sufficient time to um, write to the relevant MECs and departments to request them to be available. Uh, availability, of course, pending, and um, if uh, we hear from the departments, otherwise, if they have proposals for the times and what have you, I'll come back to the committee. Is that uh, agreeable to everyone? That's more than okay. fair. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. That's agreeable. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank we, you, uh, uh, we then agreed to the themes. We've agreed to meet uh, bi-weekly. Um, and we've agreed that the first meeting will be a situational report from the Premier, the DG, the MEC of Health and the HOD of Health. We will then have a second meeting on Wednesday, which will be um, on the theme of food security. We have then agreed that all members will submit all the issues, the items, the presentations and the questions that they would like dealt with um, in that situational report, as well as the... Um, food security theme by Monday, 12 o'clock. If I can then ask for the other themes that those issues, questions, items, presentations um, are sent to the committee by close of business on Monday so that the procedural officers and myself can compile them and we can table that with the committee on Wednesday for discussion on um, uh, the following week and how we deal with uh, those themes and issues going forward. Um, to answer some of the questions, uh, the Parliamentary Monitoring Group is on the line and has been on the line from the beginning. Um, the questions on access to the media and recordings uh, of these meetings, I will then um, uh, get the relevant information from the WCPP and share that with the committee um, either at the next meeting or uh, earlier in writing, depending on um, which, uh, which comes first. Um, and I will also then um, put the, the two meetings for Wednesday next week onto the um, agenda for the Programming Authority uh, for Tuesday morning. All right. Um, okay, with that then, um, we will have to very shortly conclude the meeting because we have a, a draw for the questions to the Premier without notice in six minutes. Okay. Chairperson, if I'm Honourable uh, Bartman? Chairperson, I just would like to draw the um, committee's attention. It's not a committee meeting of the WCPP, but the National Council of Provinces invited the Budget Committee to a virtual meeting on the 22nd from 10 to 1 
regarding the division of revenue bill. Given that it's not a WCPP meeting, of course, WCPP can have a whole day meeting throughout that time as well. I would just like to appeal that some of us would like to also attend the virtual NCOP meeting of the Division of Revenue as well. What time is that? Remind me. It's 10 o'clock. It is 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock. Um, so we then have a programming um, issue. The, the, the committee will then meet in the afternoon. But given that, members, could we then look for this committee to deal with the second item either on Thursday morning before the sitting or on Friday? Because we will need a good three hours to deal with the food security issue. I agree, Chairperson. So I'm not sure Aye. if parties uh, caucus, need to caucus on Thursday morning, um, but uh, in that being so, can we make then the second part of the meeting Friday morning? Agreed to. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Right. So we Chair. will then meet Mon uh, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon and Friday morning. The first meeting, the Premier, the DG and the Health Department, and Friday morning, the theme of food security. Yeah. Honourable so, Mitchell. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Chair, can I just um, on a win for the Friday part of this meeting for under food security that I please request that we get a representative in the Western Cape from Sasa to also be present at that meeting. Support please, would you table all of those proposals in writing as part of your submissions? So, who you'd yeah. like to present, what questions you'd like answered, um, what are the issues you'd want raised, what information should be provided. Please submit all of that in writing by 12 o'clock on Monday so that we can write to the relevant departments and so that they can prepare. Um, Honourable Syed, um, perhaps we could be a little forgiving for next week if we only send off the letters on Monday that the presentations might only be available the night before or the morning of. But certainly as we get more That's organized fine. as a committee, we would certainly want those presentations in advance so we can um, interrogate them before the meetings. All right. Thank you very uh, much, can members. Can also be in the line quickly? I just, am I going to be long? Just a quick one, Chair. Is that fine? Uh, Honorable side, please proceed. Yes, quick one, Chair. Chair, um, on the point that you spoke to about um, the... Um, but the media access chair and that you will get some info further. Could we take a decision in this meeting or at least conclude that going forward, even from the next meeting onwards, we will have media presence at least. Agreed. And access Agreed. to the public. Agreed. Meeting should Agreed. be open. I don't know. Are there any objections? Um, Not at all. No, no objection. But no could objections. I just, no objection. But a uh, chairperson could... Chairperson. Uh, Honourable Dagmore, you have 30 seconds. Yeah. Now, I would just like to... Um, appeal to all members to take good care of themselves. Um, this is a difficult time for everyone and their families, and we just um, want to ask all members to really take care of their own safety and that of their families and appreciate what people are doing um, at this time. Thank you, Honourable Dagmore. And I want to thank uh, all the members for your cooperation, for your very good ideas and for your participation in this um, COVID-19 ad hoc committee. Um, I look forward to all the inputs and to working together with you. And on that note, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Um.